Hello everyone, welcome to the Booster Shot, a daily dose for your GS preparations. This show is brought to you as a courtesy of Raj Malhotra's IES Institute, Chandigarh, and will be hosted by me, Ayush Gupta. UPSC is a marathon and not a race. It is a fallacy that you are required to cover everything under the sun in order to succeed in this examination. What is required for you to ace this examination is not expanding your sources of information but curtailing your sources of knowledge. Based on the testimonials of various past year toppers and analysis of past year papers, we have selected these three features out of the vast sea of current affairs sources that we are going to cover up every day within 10 minutes. Yes, that is a personal time limit which I have set for myself. So, what are these three features that we are going to discuss? Number one is the big picture debate that is a daily feature of Rajya Sabha TV in which distinguished panelists discuss issues of national and international importance. Number two is the very popular explained section of the Indian Express and number third is the science monitor which is a weekly feature of RSTV in which scientific developments, recent scientific developments are discussed. When the judgment day comes, that is your GS examination, we would be covered up with more than 500 plus topics by just going through these three features. And therefore, in this very manner, we are also going to gain not just information, but also perspective. Why these features are essential? Because in these features, the points which come out of these features also provide us with perspective and not just with information. So, let us start with our today's episode. So, in the yesterday's debate of the big picture and the explained section of the Indian Express, the topic that was main was the constant disruption of the parliament. As we know that recently the monsoon session of parliament had ended and therefore on account of the disruptions that is caused into this monsoon session, the, a debate was held on the RSTV as well as an issue was brought in in the explained section of the Indian Express. I have concised the entire debate into this one question which is discuss the reasons for disruption of parliament, its ramification on legislative process available powers to prevent it and lastly suggestions to improve the situation. So let's discuss the reasons for disruption of parliament. What will be the introduction? Statistics have shown that parliament is working only for one quarter of time which is allotted for it. In the last concluded monsoon session of 2021, the Lok Sabha functioned for about 22% of its allotted time and Rajya Sabha function for about 28% of its allotted time. Now, what are the reasons for it? Let us see that. So, first is playing to the gallery. So, what the legislators try to do is they use the parliament's floor to message their electorate. This happens more when there is an impending election coming. So, the legislators try to take the entire floor to themselves and rather than discussing bills, their focus is more on politics. Opposition takes the position from which they cannot withdraw, which hampers consensus building uh, process. So, oppositions generally take up such a position, a strong position that without fulfilling those conditions, they will not back off. So, this leaves no room for any consensus building to run the house. Thirdly, Government and opposition are basically holding their guns on separate issues. So, what happens in parliament is that government proposes an issue generally and the opposition provides its inputs on that very issue. However, when both of them want to discuss separate issues, then no deliberation can take place. Then, there has been instances when deliberate attempts have been made by the treasury to push politically sensitive bills without discussion. So, such as the farm bills, the JNK reorganization bill, the EWS reservation bill. These bills were generally 
pushed into the parliament without giving sufficient opportunity to discuss them. Fifthly, there has also been an issue of sometimes partisan ad attitude by the chair of the house, which tries to further government's agenda at times at the cost of due parliamentary procedure. Sixth, the errant members are not even discouraged by their own parties and also there is no disincentive for them for their behavior. Lastly, over the period of our parliamentary democracy, the time which is allotted for parliament session has been reducing which gives less and less time and opportunity for the members to put forth their views. Therefore, there has been attempts by them of hijacking the floor in, the un in an unruly manner. So, what are the ramifications of disruption of parliament? Number one is the deliberation lawmaking process, deliberated lawmaking process. The deliberative law making process, which is the martyr in this very case, is necessary and an important feature of parliament to keep checks on the executive and the legislature, legislator, legislatives. Secondly, the judiciary, whenever upon deciding upon the constitutionality of a law of the parliament, goes to the discussions which were held, the debates which were held at the time of passing those laws in order to see the intent of the parliament while passing those laws. So, when there are no dis deliberations while passing a law at all, this function, this thing cannot be resorted to judiciary. Lastly, when bills are debated, there are times that many a times they are sent to the standing committees. If the bills will not be debated, there is no chance that they will be sent to standing committees for an elaborate deliberation over them. So what happens generally when bills are sent to standing, uh, standing committees, it gives a chance to the people to reach their MPs, their representatives in the parliament and put forth their suggestions to them. So these MPs can then bring, bring these suggestions to the house and it leads to betterment of legislations. So all these things are the ramification of not working of the parliament. Then what are the available powers at present in order to stop this thing? So under rule 373 of the Lok Sabha's rule book, the speaker can suspend any member because of his behavior for the rest of the day. Under rule 374, the speaker can mention the member and then the house can bring a motion to suspend that member for the rest of the session. So, 373 ke andar speaker sirf us din ke liye suspend kar sakta hai. And 374 ke andar, Lok Sabha ke andar speaker us vyakti ka naam mention kar sakta hai and phir ye house ke upar hai ki yadi agar us vyakti ko house chahe to pure session ke liye suspend kar sakta hai by bringing in a resolution. 374, ek exception hai to 373 and 374. 374 A ke andar, jab koi exceptional circumstances aise ho jate hai, jahaan pe ek member ka behavior itna galat ho jata hai ki usse पार्लियामेंट से सस्पेंड करना उसे हाउस से सस्पेंड करना बहुत ज्यादा जरूरी हो जाता है तब स्पीकर उसका नाम मेंशन करके उन मेंबर का नाम मेंशन करके ऑटोमेटिकली उन्हें सस्पेंड कर सकता है कर सकते हैं फॉर नेक्स्ट 5 कंसेक्यूटिव डेज और फॉर द रेस्ट ऑफ द सेशन व्हिच एवर इज लेस हाउएवर व्हाट इज द प्रोसीजर टू रिवोक दिस सस्पेंशन स्पीकर डज नॉट हैव द पावर to revoke this suspension. Agar suspension ko revoke karna hai, to house ka ek resolution hi lana padega. Then, with respect to Rajya Sabha, rule 255 of the rule book of Rajya Sabha gives the power to the chairman of the Rajya Sabha to suspend any member for his behavior for the rest of the day. However, Rajya Sabha ke chairman ke paas power nahi hai unhe pure session ke liye suspend karne ke liye yadi kisi member ko pure session ke liye suspend karna hai ya kuch zyada samay ke liye suspend karna hai then a resolution will be required by the Rajya Sabha upon mentioning of that very member's name by the chairman so this is the present remedies and procedure which is available in order to curtail 
disruptions in the parliament. However, this hasn't really helped to a larger extent. There are still disruptions taking place. So, what are the suggestions, lastly, to improve this situation? Firstly, there is a need to imbibe sense of responsibility in the opposition and a sense of accommodation in the treasury bench. Then, a former member of the Rajya Sabha itself, an eminent jurist, Shri Fali Narimanji, has advocated that there should be the, that the salaries and allowances of errant members should be deductive, so that there is some disincentive to them for their behavior. Then, creation of stringent rules, there can always be more stringent rules made. Fourthly, enhancing time of sessions. So, when the time of sessions is enhanced, more members will have the time to voice their views. Today, not all the members get a chance to voice their views. We can see that independent members are generally given only one to two minutes to put forth their views in the parliament, that too on rare occasions. Then, fifthly, we can model the office of the presiding officer of both the houses on that of the British system. So, British Britain mein kya hota hai? Ki wahan ke jo speaker hai, main house ke, house of uh, people ke, that speaker cannot be removed from his chair once he is appointed and that speaker by convention is always re-elected if that speaker wants. So, what happens is that they have a security of tenure hai, and therefore they do not need to oblige their political party at the end of the day. So, thus making them more independent. One nation and one election can also play an important part in streamlining parliamentary procedures. As we have seen that parliament's floor is used for political purposes mostly when there is an impending lecture, uh, impending election coming up. Therefore, if a situation comes up when there is only one election in the country, one time election, then the house cannot, will not be probably held hostage to political purposes. So this was all with respect to the big picture and the Indian explain, ex, Expresses explained section. If you like the video, do share and subscribe it and stay tuned for our future episodes. Thank you and have a nice day.